This is the Valen Venture Vlog, Episode 3. Another thing as a misconception is people think you go to work for money. But money is the worst thing you should go to uh-huh. work for. Because work kind of means how you mm-hmm. spend your day. And, ta- and trading time for money, time is the only resource you don't have an infinite amount for. We can have as much, all kinds of things, but we all have the same amount of time. So how you change the world is you follow your dream. And you, you, get so, you love your life so much and it's so happy that you're going to be wanting to, and what you're doing is going to be benefiting others and benefiting other people. And if people live like that, you change the world. Fam Vester presents the Valen Venture Vlog. Join us on our search for freedom, adventure, and the absolute truths of this world. On our journey, we will discuss passive income streams, being frugal, living optimalistically, and designing a wholesome lifestyle all for the purpose of investing in the family, because strong families are the cornerstone for a world at peace. One, two, welcome to Winter Rock. <laughs> okay, very good. <laughs> hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Valen Venture Vlog. So this is a great show we have for you. We have Jonathan Jesper. Uh, he gave a lot of great tips how to get started on Amazon FBA and uh, just, yeah, the whole progression. And also at the end of the interview or towards the middle of the interview, he even gives a, a free, well, it's not a free, but an invitation to kind of get started with him in creating your own brand and your and start selling your own Amazon business, you know could start making six seven figures in Amazon started and also so much life lessons really towards the end of the episode that he gives and shares that I really resonated with and I thought were such so on point and really hit home for me especially and I think a lot of you viewers will uh, enjoy it as well and uh, yeah it's a great show Valen really enjoyed it too he goes to the park later on and gives it a thumbs up <laughs> that's right is that what you're doing yeah, anyway, it's a, it's a great show. Um, yeah, I won't talk too much more, but yeah, listen in. Uh, he, even if you're not interested in Amazon, I think just listen to Jonathan. He's, he's an amazing guy and an amazing... He, he, yeah, he did an awesome job, so just listen. Um, he's all the way in no, uh, Las Vegas, Nevada, so hopefully we get some cool scenery there. And yeah, it's just, it's just really good, so tune in. Okay, hello everyone, and thanks for tuning back in to the Valen Venture Vlog. We have another awesome show for you. Today we have a very very special guest and his son. We have Jonathan Jesper and his son Kisung. So Jonathan Jesper is an entrepreneur currently manufacturing products for his brands and selling them on Amazon.com. His business is run through a laptop, which provides flexibility to spend time with his family and travel. He believes that we should be successful in all areas of our lives, and life is meant to be spent following our dreams and passions. Jonathan lives in Las Vegas, Nevada, where he's joining us from today. And together with his wife, Yuri, they have the cutest son, Kisung. I have a little, I have a little problem saying that last statement because I have to argue that my boy here, he might be the cutest. That's because uh, you, we'll you have to come over here that. and see him. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I do. I guess I do. But uh, maybe the viewers can vote which, which son they think is cuter. But uh, well. yeah, thanks for joining us, Jonathan. Uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about you, uh, your, yourself and your family? Sure. My wife is from Japan. Uh, we were married almost ni- nine years ago. Almost nine years. And uh, we've it's been a definitely a journey with the international with the international marriage and um, getting together, but it's been a really worthwhile journey. We had a year and a half ago we had my son, and that was a totally different experience becoming a dad. Uh, one of the biggest things was I just wasn't number one in my wife's eyes anymore. She had a new man in town. But, <laughs> Uh-huh. That, that was that was part of it. But once now, like with my son, we're able to interact and play and talk. It's been awesome. I just like we sometimes talk about it. Can you imagine if we didn't have like our kid? And it's just like we feel so empty. We we ask ourselves the same question. <laughs> yep, yep. That's awesome. Um, so Jonathan, you don't work a traditional nine to five, right? Do you you work from home? What what is it that you do? Ah, uh, yeah, I don't. I, mean, I don't work you the do traditional the nine FBA. to five. I don't work traditional hours. Uh, sometimes I work at night. Sometimes I work at the day. Sometimes I don't work. Uh, 
I don't really know what day of the week it is. People always are like excited because <laughs> it's a weekend, but I sometimes work Saturdays yeah. and Sundays. Sometimes I take off Monday, Tuesdays. Uh, it's pretty flexible. So people usually they're all like depressed. Oh, it's Monday. But I'm like, woohoo, it's Monday. Woohoo, it's Tuesday. Woohoo, it's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, <laughs> Saturday, Sunday. Doesn't matter to you. Doesn't matter. That's awesome. So uh, you and your wife, I mean, you know, she, she's international, but I mean, do you guys, do you work at this Amazon business together or it's kind of you selling she, it while she helps out more with the, with the uh, Keysung or? She, my work? wife is just graduating now from massage therapy school. So it's been uh, quite a family effort oh, wow. for, yeah, I watch it. I would watch him while she goes to school and studies and then she would watch him if I'm working okay. on something. So that's been the big project. She helps a little uh -huh. bit with our Amazon Japan account because uh -huh. she's Japanese. Um, but she generally doesn't okay. like computer work so much. I'm more the yeah. one that enjoys okay. it. Okay, that's awesome. So you're, you're, you have the flexibility to kind of help watch, watch uh, Ki Sung while she gets her studies done. Now she's graduated, that's awesome. Um, so I, I'm really excited to have you here today because I get, like from my blog, uh, Fam Investor, I feel like the most question that I get asked is like kind of how I got started on Amazon FBA and just like how it works. People just seem so intrigued by the concept of it. Do you, can, can you just give us like a quick couple sentence overview of Amazon FBA, what it is, how it works, and how you make money on it? Okay, so with uh, Amazon FBA in particular with this business model is you are selling products. Um, you're selling physical products and there's actually selling products on Amazon. There's many different uh, methods. You can sell digital products. You can be what's called an affiliate and you can sell other people's products. But in this model, I am selling products in this specific one. I am selling uh, my own branded and created products that I have manufactured. Uh, Amazon has okay. Amazon has FBA. What's called FBA fulfilled by Amazon for those that don't know is what FBA stands for. Yeah, so fulfilled by Amazon, what that means is Amazon handles all the logistics and shipping. So if you see when you buy something on Amazon.com, if you see a prime like a prime symbol with two day free shipping, it's usually because Amazon's mm -hmm. the one shipping it. So what's nice is mm. as an entrepreneur, you can leverage Amazon's fulfillment networks for your products. So Amazon handles mm -hmm. all the logistics and shipping and warehousing of my products. And where that is a value yeah. is, is I don't actually have to touch physical products. So majority of my products are made in China and I have mm -hmm. a sourcing agent in China. She helps coordinate with the factories and get samples and gets products. We put them on a, we get them shipped over to the US. My logistics freight forwarder team, they, they get the mm -hmm. goods, we inspect it, make sure it's good, and they send it to Amazon's warehouse, and Amazon sends it to the customer. So what's nice is I don't ever oh, actually awesome. have to touch or see any product. And because of that, yep. I'm able to have complete flexibility. I, I can run everything from a laptop. And that was and nice so because- it's so scalable, right? Yeah, it's so scalable. You don't have a lot of overhead. You don't have, uh, you could run it with a small team yourself or even some virtual assistants in the Philippines or other kind of uh, mm -hmm. locations if you want. You can do, it just provides a lot of flexibility. So for instance, one of the, one of the best moments was I got to spend like three, four months in Japan for the end of my wife's pregnancy and my son was able to be born in Japan and I just had that opportunity where it's no problem. I can just be anywhere at any time because I'm not bound to yeah, a single location. Yeah, and you're just location. working from a laptop. Yep, I'll run through a laptop. So awesome. <laughs> and you were in a different country, you were in Japan, just, just yeah. continuing a day, day as normal as it would have been if you were here. That's awesome. Um, so, so I mean, can you, okay, so what were you doing before Amazon? Just I've been an entrepreneur years, no. for a while and I've had a lot of different experiences with different projects. When I first started, uh, the first thing I started with is I started a fundraising service for schools where we would sell flowers at their graduations okay. and uh, would give a percentage of sales to the school. That was my first one. I did that okay. in college and it paid for college and it still actually makes money. So that was the first one I did. The second awesome. project I did is we my dad and I, we started a cafe service for Walgreens drugstores. Like we set up these like uh -huh. mini Starbucks kiosks that had like co a co cappuccino machine. You can get a hot chocolate, coffee, latte, mocha with the touch of a button. 
Awesome. And uh, but that one okay. didn't that didn't work so well. After that, uh -huh. I did uh, mall kiosks. Like if you see in the middle of malls, you'll see people selling different kinds of products, and you do it for like Christmas time. Mm -hmm. And so I did that for uh, I did that for a couple years, and from that I realized there's a couple mm -hmm. things I didn't like. And that's one thing is when you're Sometimes when you do things, it's great to always have in mind, you can try different things out. And as you try things out, you're going to yeah. realize more and more what suits you. Uh, one thing I didn't like, I learned is I was tied down to a location. I had mm -hmm. to wait for customers. So I would be waiting for customers. I had employees, uh -huh. lots of employees. I had to handle inventory. Mm -hmm. And I realized I didn't want that. Mm -hmm. I wanted uh, flexibility. Yeah. I didn't want to be tied down to a location. I wanted to be... Yep. Uh, a lot more free and because I realized that I then found out about the Amazon private labeling opportunity how I got started on Amazon was while I was doing a mall kiosk there was a Brookstone store that was closing down okay and they were uh -huh. they eventually they offered all their products at 70% off and I was like I know people that sell products on Amazon oh, Wow I wonder if I can sell <laughs> these products on Amazon so I just I literally walked in awesome. and bought a third of the store and then I, <laughs> they thought I was crazy. Like in my kiosk, I just had like Brookstone, like air remote control helicopters <laughs> and robots and all like stacked all the way uh -huh. up to the sea. It was pretty crazy. And I was just shipping stuff. And uh, it was cool <laughs> because when I did Go that, ahead. the next morning, a few days later, I woke up in the morning and I saw like 25 things sold mm -hmm. while I was sleeping. And that's when the light that bulb so clicked. Awesome. Cause I was like, wait a yeah, second. Yeah, yeah. All, I had, all I had to do is uh, get the products and ship them out. And then they sold. I didn't have to yeah. wait for the customer. I didn't have to stand around a kiosk for nine hours. Uh, I didn't have employees. It yeah. actually all happened while I was sleeping. And that's how I started the journey that's of figuring awesome. out how to sell things on Amazon. Um, really quick. Yeah. How I progressed from there is I went, then I realized, well, what else can I sell? So I went to stores. It's called retail arbitrage, and you buy things that are on sale mm -hmm. at a store, and then you sell it for more expensive online. So, like if you go to a store, you'll see a clearance section. Things are like 70% mm -hmm. off, maybe more, and then you mm -hmm. can send those into Amazon and then sell them at a profit. But I was like, this isn't scalable because if yeah. I don't go out looking for products, so then I sold wholesale yep. products. I sold uh, other people's products, and that was better because it was scalable. But then the margins were tight. And also, I would be competing mm -hmm. for the sales with other people that are selling those products. Yeah. So there was a whole progression awesome. of so, learning so what I want and learning what it is. And then mm -hmm. as I got more clear on what I want, I, more opportunities came for me. And then when I saw the private labeling concept, I was like, that's it. I already knew that's, that's what I yeah. needed so to do. So private, private labeling... Yeah, so private labeling for those that don't know, can you just explain like why why private la what private labeling is and why that's so kind of crucial to avoid competitors and things like that? So what it is is you are creating your own products and brands. So instead of selling uh, for instance, I'm right now w looking at a microphone with a GoPro. If you're selling this GoPro uh, thing, anybody else can sell it because it's somebody else's mm -hmm. product. But let's say you made Valen Ventures uh, action camera that is your product yes. it is the brand you created so you're the only one that can mm -hmm. sell it unless you authorize other people to sell mm -hmm. it but not only mm -hmm. that you can control yeah. the other thing is when you sell other people's products you can't control the quality you can't control the customer experience yep. it's not your product when it's your product yep. you control yep. everything lastly yep. when you buy something from a wholesaler the wholesaler wants to make profit because they buy it from the manufacturer yep. When you are the manufacturer and sell directly to the customer, you can make a much higher margin. A margin is like how much mm -hmm. profit you make in a sale. And the reason you can make more yep. is because you're skipping the middleman. There's no wholesaler. You are the manufacturer and the retailer. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So I just want to share with the viewers a real quick, like kind of my story. So we 
we got into Amazon through the pacifiers. We started selling pacifiers on Amazon. And the reason was we brought home Valen when he was uh, just coming home from the hospital. And they give you this pacifier and the hospital. Uh, but you can't find it anywhere in stores. And when we lost that pacifier, we were freaking out because we couldn't keep him quiet. The pacifier he liked wasn't there anymore. We couldn't find it. We tried giving him other store-bought pacifiers. He didn't like it. So we sourced out where the hospitals were getting these pacifiers from. We found on forums that other people had the same issue where they wanted to find um, find this pacifier that only that pacifier the baby liked. So we sourced it, we started selling on eBay. We had the problem with eBay where we had to fulfill every single order. It was selling really well, but I had every day, I had to run to the post office, ship it to this guy, ship it to this guy. So Amazon FBA fulfills that problem. So we were like, okay, let's do Amazon. We'll send a thousand pacifiers to Amazon's warehouses. We'll go back, okay, Valen? And so we sent, you know, pacifiers to their fulfillment centers. And then whenever we got an order, Amazon does did it. And as, as Jonathan said, you know, just through the night, you know, we were selling 20 pacifiers a day. Money was coming in. But because it was an our branded product, competitors started joining in. And we were selling it at $6.21, you know, so we had like a dollar profit per sale based on FBA fees and our product costs. Uh, but then soon a competitor came in, you know, he put it at $5.99. So we lost 30 cents profit per order and there's nothing we could do about it it's not our brand we had no control we didn't private label it and brand it or it, well we didn't manufacture so we had no right to but so what Jonathan's saying is like you create that own brand Valen cameras and then now no one can sell Valen cameras but you because you have rights to it but if I just started selling GoPros some other person could undercut me and sell GoPros a lot better exactly anyway go ahead Jonathan Oh no, that's exactly yeah. that's exactly uh, the point. Also, there's another point to it is that it's a lot of fun selling your product because you get to put your creativity into it. If it's someone else's product, it's their it's their brainchild, it's their creativity. So, when mm -hmm. you're creating your brand, like we have a baby brand, and we get to think like how would we like mm -hmm. the colors to be? How would we like the customer message? What kind of products would we like? It gets really fun. And when you when you get a when you get a product, it's almost like a baby. Like I have, I have other kids yep. besides my son. I have my products. And when people are buying them <laughs> yep. and they're loving them and they're sending you emails about how great of value it is for their life, it feels good. Yep. It's exciting. Yeah, honestly, you, you gave us some of your products to try, and we tried uh, some of yours, and we gave it to our younger son, Alvin, who's seven months now. But he loves that thing, you know, and we... Uh, we've used other ones with Valen and then they were not nearly as cool and yeah it's awesome that you created something like that and that now you're selling it to the masses and it's your own brand that you you marketed and just made that's awesome so f from all your other entrepreneurial ventures you know you're, you're kind of seeking other opportunities and stuff do you think you kind of found your what you what you're seeking with entrepreneurship in this Amazon FBA is this like kind of your set on it and you're just trying to expand this or are you still doing other things uh, no I'm I'm all in on Amazon FBA it is not my uh, end goal like it's just a stepping stone mm -hmm. it's like my training ground of learning business and learning things it's definitely not an end goal mm -hmm. but it, I've decided that this is the platform of how I'm gonna grow oh, my yeah. wealth so I am all in on developing mm -hmm. my Amazon products and I'm currently not doing any other business opportunities uh, so it sounds like you have a pretty good balance of family and kind of entrepreneurial dreams. Would you would you say that? Um, is there any struggle there? Like, do you think you would have been better off working a nine to five? Oh no happen? no no no, not a chance. That's that's definitely yeah. a, a so not a chance. So but that freedom. has but I don't want any viewers to misunderstand that. And this is a part about life too, is that you have to be true to who you are. And I realized that when I was in college and I stopped going to college. I, I stopped college when I was one, one semester away from graduating, actually. And, yeah, it's because I realized that I wasn't being true to myself. It's not real. I wasn't really gaining value and I wasn't really feeling I was on purpose. And so for me, like I have some friends, they're doing the corporate world and they love it because they're following their bliss and they're getting quite opportunities. And sometimes I'm like, man, it'd be nice if I had those opportunities and connections like they're making. And, but then on the other hand, would I enjoy it? And the answer is no. Like I did business ventures where I didn't succeed and I lost money. And one thing I had to realize, and actually I'll tell this to the viewers because it was a really big realization for me, is I realized what success was. And for most people, when they think you're successful, it's tied to some kind of accomplishment. You have this much money in the bank. You drive this kind of car. 
And what I realized what, what success is, is actually it's not any destination, it's a journey. And the journey is when you're on point with your purpose and you feel good about yourself and what you're doing. And what I realized was, was even when I struggled and I didn't succeed and I failed, I thought if I do this the rest of my life and I keep striking out, how would I feel? And what my realization was, was even if I strike out but I'm following my purpose, I can strike out with a smile on my face. But even if I succeed but I don't feel genuine to who I am, then it's, it's fake. And I think too much, people, too much people settle for what's safe or what's expected instead of what's them. What's, yeah. What drives and inspires them? What makes them motivated? What makes them excited? And we'll come back, Balin. Yeah, that's just how I want to live. Yeah, no, I. And I feel like even some people just don't even understand that there are other options other than like working a traditional nine to five and you know working for a corporation and not fulfilling your own dreams, your own passions. That's just you know what everyone does and. Uh, yeah, that's awesome that you really pursued this and uh, were successful at it. Hey, Valen, can you uh, hold on a little yeah, bit? Yeah, of course. Well, play on the playground when we're done. Yeah. Um, so I feel like a lot of people ask me, they're, they're, they're really interested. They start studying and they want to just get started. Um, do you have like a recommended route or even like resources that you point people towards uh, to get started and... Uh, yeah. Sure. In the Amazon FBA. I learned through a course. It's uh, There's many options. If people are on a budget, you don't even have to spend so much money. But I learned through a course called The Amazing Selling Machine. It is the first course that taught people how to sell on Amazon. It is the biggest course. And it's also the most expensive course. But what I've noticed going to events where I've seen successful sellers, there's often this like phrase, What it's called ASM, Amazing Selling Machine. What ASM are you? Oh, I'm ASM 1, I'm ASM 2, I'm ASM 3, I'm 4, I'm 5. And what I've learned is actually it's probably the best one. And not just because of the content, but because of the uh, commitment you make when you purchase the course. Is that more successful sellers come from that course than any other course. Really? Oh, okay. no, it's not even close. So, can you... Can you tell us how much this course is? Or you think that's a pretty big... Uh, uh, it, everything's I relative, okay? So to some viewers, it may seem reasonable. And to some viewers, it may seem expensive. The course is $4,000. Yeah. And it teaches you how okay. to start a private, uh, your own private label business. Now, for some people, that seems like a okay. lot. And the reality is, is you can get information mm -hmm. more cheaply. But I've just seen again and again, yep. the successful sellers are the ones willing to pay to learn. So if you're set, if, if, yeah. to give people an understanding, if you get a pr one product, and let's say it makes $50 profit a day, and you sell mm -hmm. an average of 10, uh, let's say you sell, it makes, 50, it says it makes $5 uh, profit, and you sell 10 a day, that's $50 profit. Mm -hmm. If you do that 10 times, yep. you're gonna be making $500 a day profit. And why I'm saying that is because mm -hmm. it, I'm still v easily able to find product opportunities that make $100 a day at least, maybe more, let alone yeah. $50. So if you do that for a year, uh -huh. and let's say in a year you make $50,000, $100,000, $150,000, that $4,000 that you spent in the beginning is actually not that much to build a scalable, yeah. sustainable business that keeps giving you a return on your investment. Yep. Um, okay, that's awesome. Okay, so, I mean, you're definitely recommending this route. You know, you spend the $4,000. That's a lot of money, so you're definitely committed. You want to see this through because, yeah, you invested so much into it. And I definitely see that, you know, when I invest <laughs> in things, make those sacrifices. Yeah, you make those sacrifices, you invest more, and you're more uh, committed to it. And you, you end up, you know, following through and going for it. Oh, yeah, 100%. But let's say, what? what, what yeah, what would you suggest? Is there another route? Is there another route? Sure, there's, there's, a, there's a few other routes. So let me give a couple options. And it's interesting okay. because we scheduled, this, uh, we scheduled this call a while back. And just a few days ago, I decided to do this. But uh, for instance, when I bought the course, I actually did a group buy with someone. But I paid extra money. And many uh, people offer a coaching group 
when you buy a course through them. And I did mm-hmm. it through a coaching group, and I found such value from a coaching group because okay. you have other sellers to bounce is ideas someone, off is of. Is someone coaching you, or you're, like, in a mastermind? It, where kind of a mastermind. So, like, let's say there's a week's, uh, a okay. week's lesson on the course. You would have another okay. – we would have, like, a webinar meeting with our group, and mm-hmm. then the person leading the group who's an experienced seller, he would give his ins and outs of what he thinks is the most essential, how he applies or she applies the content – into their business and then people can ask questions Mm -hmm. and the tip I learned a couple tips made me launch a product probably two or three months faster and it paid for itself many times over that's awesome so that's that's one route is when you're doing a course to make it another route is actually buy it through someone that's offering value uh, as a coaching group Mm -hmm. and so I've had so many people come up to me and ask me if they can help them start an Amazon business that I decided that I would uh-huh. do a coaching group if people would like to uh, uh, go through the ASM course. Another option you can do is you, okay. can get, you can get free information. If you just go to YouTube and you type in like uh, private labeling, Amazon, I think there's a great blog called mm-hmm. Jungle Scout. They have a great blog okay. of how to launch your own product. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. you can find it there without spending much money. But for people that are very serious about this business, I have a, I really do yeah. have a recommendation, and that is at some point, okay. you're going to need to spend money, y- especially if you're putting okay. in orders for products. So if you try to just do it on the cheap side, it can work, but I just mm-hmm. don't see a lot of people that are successful that did it that way. And yeah, at some point, you're going to, to make this business successful, you're going to have to start investing more money, and you're going to have to go higher. Like, I go mm-hmm. to now events and masterminds. I th- it took me a while to learn this because I was more on the cheap side. My yeah. business only grew when mm-hmm. actually I started paying money to learn. Sometimes I spend five thousand mm-hmm. dollars just for a weekend. Yeah, wow. So just um, so uh, when you're saying like you kind of have to invest more, you're talking courses, but I guess you're also talking like tools and software. Everything. At some everything. point, everything. you're gonna everything. you're gonna have like one product, and it's gonna make money. But you realize you want to sell more of that product. You're gonna need to invest more money into or, uh, ordering product. Yeah. And this is something people okay. that don't um, talk I about I enough. It's it's a cash flow. It's a cash flow business. Other businesses, mm-hmm. like a software or things, there's not you know all is, all the costs are upfront. But this, you're ordering products. So as you want to scale your business yeah. higher, you're gonna need to order more products. Okay makes sense um okay uh so is there okay so you mentioned kind of youtube and that that resource Mm -hmm. uh, jungle scout as like a free resource almost right for them to kind of look into it a little bit um is there uh, do you feel like any someone could just like kind of try it you know get that 40 dollar a month amazon seller account or i think you can even just pay one dollar referral fee or something Mm -hmm. amazon just like get started buy some product do you do you recommend people do you mentioned in the beginning you started with a retail arbitrage where you maybe go to walmart go to the 70 percent clearance section buy product and sell do you you recommend people start that way you don't really think it's i mean i guess you're at a new level where you know those small dollar amounts aren't worth your time but do you recommend people do that just kind of get a feel for oh yeah definitely if you do a like the courses yeah. are for people that are serious, that know that this is what they want to do and they're ready to commit their time and money and focus to doing it. If you're not sure, one thing mm-hmm. is you can do is they have a lot of like videos uh, leading up to a course and they usually have a money back guarantee on a course. And there's many courses out there. I'm just partial to the amazing selling machine because mm-hmm. that's where most people are successful. But if you don't know, yeah. a big thing is, is that not everyone likes every type of business and every type of thing. You have to know if it fits you. A great way mm-hmm. to start with not much upfront investment is yeah, you sign up for your own Amazon seller account. Uh, you can research YouTube videos on how to do retail arbitrage on Amazon. And then you can just go to a store and start finding products. That's how I started and I realized I love this. It was like a, tra- yeah. it was like a treasure yeah, hunt. A lot of fun. Yeah, I have, a, I have a couple of friends, they do garage sales too. They just go to garage sales, find good deals, and they just, you can just use the Amazon phone app, right, to kind of see how much it's selling for. Oh, yeah. The you're, margin will be after yep. like fees and stuff. Yep, definitely. Yeah. Okay, any other resource, like if you're just kind of like feel it out, do you recommend any other software, or do you think that's all you kind of really need? Uh, to get app? started, no. There's uh, two softwares I use a lot. One is called Jungle Scout. And it helps you see how much okay. things are selling for on Amazon, like how much money they're selling for, so you know how much okay. to buy. Um, 
There's a better okay. one, a more in detail Doesn't one. Doesn't the Amazon app do that as well, or no? No. There's something called the bestseller rank, okay. and it lets you know where it's ranked in the category. So there's software that'll let you know, okay. based on the rank, how many sales a month a product has. Okay, and you want a high selling thing, you don't want it to sit in the sh on the shelf because there's also inventory uh, it depends costs if you, involved. Yeah, correct. Wanna... But if you're doing retail arbitrage, if you buy something for $2 yeah. and you can sell it for like 100 you don't mind if it takes two months yeah. to sell. That's true. Okay. Okay, cool. Um, well, is there is there anything else like related to Amazon or like to newbies that want to get started that you kind of want to share? Otherwise, we'll kind of move on to our next segment of the show. I think that's basically it. Um, if people are really serious, again, my recommendation, if you're really serious, is invest into a course. The best is a course of the coaching group. And what you gain from value yeah. from people that you meet is going to help you so much faster than if you figure things out on your own and guess and save you a lot of money in the process. Mm -hmm. The second thing is if you don't know, again, just to recap, if you don't know if you like selling on Amazon, set up an account and start searching for stuff at stores and see if, it, if it's something that's exciting yeah. for you. Yep. And you kind of get to know the whole process, shipping it out to Amazon fulfillment centers. And yeah, I think it's definitely valuable. Okay, so we're moving on to the next segment where I'm just going to ask you a series of questions. Hopefully I prepped you. I don't remember what I did at this point. But uh, do you have a favorite quote, something you live by? I have a okay, few. This is good. I have a few quotes. Okay, no, you could you could go for it then. Go. For well, it. There's, they more like they come up. But uh, one is about success, like we mentioned. Mm -hmm. And that is... Success is the realization, is a progressive realization of a worthwhile ideal. And, and that is what it's meaning is, is that you never, it's a progression. You're always in progress of achieving something that's meaningful to you. So the day you're successful where you can, is the day you're living on your life's purpose. I love that one. I also love if you want to change things in your if you want things to change in your life you have to change things in your life. And where that one gets into it's like if you want things in your life to change you have to change things in your life. And where that one leads to is it's our results are a reflection of us whether that's our relationships, our uh our income, how we're living in life's purpose. And it's counterintuitive because our society is, and you can see it, especially through social media and like news, it's so easy to make the problem the outside, the other groups, the other people, the divisions. But the reality is, is it's us. And the more we make excuses and the more we blame other people, we take away the potential and power of our life. And the, reali and the reality is, is yep. that we're our only barrier. We are mm -hmm. our biggest we are our biggest asset and our biggest liability. And I yeah. really that's why I like that quote a lot too. A uh, third quote really quick, a third quote I like is before I look to conquer the world, I have to first conquer myself. Ooh, I've heard that one before. Definitely like that one. I think that's in my favorite quote section. Awesome. Um, so what's your favorite book or what's a book you'd recommend or what's, what's, what's one you've liked recently? Uh, see, okay. My favorite book of all time is a book called Real Love by Greg Bear. And okay, I've heard that. Yeah. So I, the reason I like it is it talks about the essentials in life. Like what the thing that we all really mm -hmm. want is unconditional real love. If you break it down, we don't actually want cars. We don't want nice things. The reason we want those things is because we think we're going to get love that's actually what we want and that book just breaks down the core mm -hmm. uh, I read it I cried I felt divided I, I realized I had to change how I treat my wife and all kinds of things and that yeah. was a great book my other two favorite books are Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and the last oh, one I is gotta read that one the, uh, well, the last one is called The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles and both of them use the term rich but viewers need to understand that rich mm -hmm. does not just mean money it means quality of life yep. and living your, your dreams. Yep. Yep. I, I feel like I read a lot of books and all, it's a, a lot of them are like financial books and like kind of like wealth building, but 
it's it's really not about like attaining large quantities of money it's more like just finding fulfillment in what you do and living your dream and passions and then usually you know money and success follows once you once you complete that by curiosity do you read a lot of books um what's your take with books yeah i read i try to read a lot um i also listen to like audio books and audio tapes i try to listen to I try to listen and read for almost like an hour to two hours a day. and Okay, awesome. That's probably about the same for me. And then uh, what recently, though, is I'm starting to read less like new books, but reading what I call core books and reading less on like tactics and more on principles. Interesting. Okay. Can you give us an example of a core book? Uh, think and Grow Rich. Sci okay. Science of Getting Rich. Those books, they're so universal and they're so like fundamental principles of our life that you could read it and then reread it and gain something new every time. Okay. Okay, yeah, I definitely have those kind of books. What are some of your best habits, attitudes? My ambition is one of my best attitudes. I am very ambitious. I can get. Um, another one is my ability to my ambition, my ability to dream and see the future, and uh, my ability also to be able to empathize with others. Mm -hmm. Okay, so going back to the first one you mentioned, the ambition part. I mean, I feel like you're saying, you, you know, you don't invest too much time into this business and you could just do it from a laptop. But I, do, sure, like, I do invest, invest time. More time. I do invest time into this business. Okay. Now, I don't invest... How, like, how many hours a week would you say? It varies. 20 to 30? 20 to 30. Okay. But, I mean, um, <laughs> so, so I mean, I'm sure you could invest more, right? You could be working 60-hour weeks, 70-hour weeks, easily at new, new product lines and things like that. Would you say that's correct? You could. You have those ideas. No. I, no. okay. Yeah, the re there's a reason for that. If you'd like me to say, is that? Yeah, I would. I would like you to say like this why is. Aren't uh, you, I mean, you're making. Because people assume if I'm not actually working in front of a computer, I'm not working on my business. When I'm uh, when I'm studying, I'm working on my business. When I'm hanging out with my wife and kids, I'm working on my business. Because first of all, it's all about fulfillment in life. And. So often people think like they're different people when they're at the workplace, they're at work. And when they're at home, they're at home. But the reality is everything you do in your day should be towards your goals in life. That's one. Two is oftentimes we equate time with money. And in order to make more money, you have to invest more time. And it's actually when you're working on your own, it's not the amount of time you're investing, but how effective is your time. Yep. So for me, it's not necessarily, I, would, I could work more hours, but I don't know if it'd be effective. I'm trying to figure out how I can be more effective in the hours I do work. And I'm learning uh -huh. that that's actually working okay. less and my thinking has to get better. My thinking has to get stronger. Awesome, yeah, I definitely totally agree with that. Awesome. Okay, so here's a hard one. Uh -huh. How do you change the world? Is this for me personally, or is this like, how do people change the world? No, this is you personally. Okay, well, I think it's, it can be applied to both anyway. You change the world by living mm. your purpose, living your dream. The reason why I say that is because there's seeds and everyone's different. And I feel like there's a seed of potential inside everyone. And some people, mm -hmm. for instance, they love, they love engineering and they love science and physics and all this stuff. For me, I get sleepy. I can't stand it. So they're, <laughs> what, what gets them excited and what gets me excited are totally different. Generally, what you love to do, the reason you love it is because it resonates with you. And the reason it resonates with you is because it's on purpose of who you are. I think everyone has a gift. When they share it with the world, they can bring value. And just not enough people are choosing to follow their bliss, follow their gifts, follow their dreams. And they more just do things to get by. One, one meme I love, yep. it shows someone, it goes, is my purpose in life just to pay bills and die? And 
That's so awesome. People <laughs> often, another thing as a misconception is people think you go to work for money. But money's the worst thing you should go to work for. Because work kind of means how you spend your day. And, and trading time for money, time is the only resource you don't have an infinite amount for. We can have as much, all kinds of things, but we all have the same amount of time. So how you change the world is you follow your dream and you get so, you love your life so much and it's so happy that you're going to be wanting to, and what you're doing is going to be benefiting others and benefiting other people. And if people live like that, you change the world. And also you, by you being, other people think that they have to change other people. By you living on purpose and living life for your joy, you are setting the example and giving permission for other people to do the same. Um, what is the best advice you have for young couples and uh, families just kind of starting out? Maybe young couples just starting out. Hmm. Yeah, we're, going, we're running the gamut here with the questions. No, it's a, that's a good that's a good question. I am trying to think the best advice. One is or, have you a... Know, something meaningful. Yeah, a couple yeah. things. This is one kind of deep, and then there's other more practical. But one is going to be that... And think of your uh, think of something bigger than yourself for your couple. Have something that okay. you're living for. So like my wife and I, mm -hmm. we want to live for a real love, like a true love, and we want this true love to do something mm -hmm. to contribute for the world. And then religiously, ultimately, mm -hmm. that can be a two we can experience our relationship with God. And that's mm -hmm. something that's beyond just me. And how do I feel at this one moment? <laughs> my son yeah. wants to. My son's talking now. And. <laughs> Practically, uh, personally, I think everyone's journey is different. For my journey, waiting to have kids mm -hmm. and building my foundation with my wife was really important. Mm -hmm. Making okay. sure our relationship was strong. And lastly is to, uh, I, was, I read the book Real Love. Everyone should read that book. Change your mm -hmm. life, promise. Okay, I'm definitely going to read it. Okay. Um, how, long, how long have you been married with your wife? Nine, almost nine years. Oh, wow. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Um, okay. So, what are what are some of your hobbies? I love personal development. <laughs> I love learning mm -hmm. about myself. And reading those books. And, and reading the books and going mm -hmm. to seminars, that type of thing. I love because what happens is I talk about my dreams and think about the future, and I love that stuff. I can, I don't get tired of it. I'll, I can do it okay. all day long. But I love watching sports. <laughs> okay. So yep. I'm a Chicago sports fan. And I love going out mm -hmm. to eat. Okay. What, what's your favorite uh, restaurants to go to? Uh, usually sushi. Sushi and Japanese food. Okay. Awesome. How does your wife cook? She cooks pretty well. Can't complain. <laughs> hey, Kisa, we're going to go over there. Can't complain at all. <laughs> yeah, we're almost done here. <laughs> no, we're good. He wants awesome. to go towards the path. I, I accidentally went towards his favorite path, so he wants to go there. He'll be fine. Okay. Yeah, actually, actually, Valen got really um, upset because we kept passing playgrounds, and I was just like, hey, be quiet. We have to do this shit. I know, I know. I'm like, why did I drive? <laughs> why did I ride towards the <laughs> path? <laughs> Silly me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway, it's all good. We're almost done here, Keysung. You can play all you want soon. Um, so, uh, okay, one last question before the last question. So what's, what's kind of like inspiring you now? Like what, what wakes you up early in the morning and like kind of keeps you up at night? My fear, not necessarily my fear is what inspires me, but I realize that I'm trying to do things bigger than what I think I can do. And I'm trying to challenge the concepts okay. I have about myself. And... Uh -huh. um, I realize that it's not that anything is big or small. It's just my own mindset of what I think I'm capable and worthy of. And that's a really motivating mm -hmm. factor because if I can conquer it in me and I can do things and accomplish more than what my fear and what I th think I can do, then I know that can inspire other people to do the same. Yeah. Yeah. I awesome want to be, job. yeah, I want to be an example really of... Really epic answers here. I want to be an example of how to, that people can, when you live life, you can be successful in all areas. And I think too often people settle. I settle. We all settle. And when life is not meant... If I go back to a religious point, I don't know our audience, but like if there's a God, and this God would give us desires that would be impossible, that we couldn't accomplish... 
I think that would be the most evil thing God could do. So if we have a dream in our heart, if we have an inspiration, it's because the reason we have it is because it's, we can do it. We're supposed to do it. And living li- how to live life like that and getting the most out of life, and that just means monetarily, but also with my relationships and how I spend time, it really drives me. But I have my other, wow, I have awesome, my other okay. voice in my head, which has the fear and the doubt and the worry and the negativity. And I realize that that's what's holding me back. And if I can mm-hmm. learn how to have faith, how to have gratitude, how to set goals and believe, believe in the unseen, then I can do anything. So that this challenge of developing this part of myself is what inspires me. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Jonathan, yeah, you, you, man, so much, so much valuable content here. Uh, So glad that you shared so much with with our audience. And uh, if people, you know, like what you're saying, want to get more in or have some questions for you, where can uh, people reach you? Uh, I guess I can give an email. Jonathan at onefamilycorp.com, O-N-E-F-A-M-I-L-Y-C-O-R-P, onefamilycorp.com. They can email me. They can look me up on Facebook. Uh, this is not a pitch fest or anything. It's just if people want to do the Amazing Selling Machine course, this really resonates, this lifestyle. Um, I'm going to be doing a coaching group with a launch that's going to be happening in October. And I want my excitement is just people seeing people build seven- and eight-figure businesses. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks so much for being, uh, for sharing your knowledge and uh, being a part of this show. And uh, honestly, I, I love the stuff you're saying about Amazon, but s- your, your principles and kind of your life outlook, I enjoyed even more. So I think a lot of people will get a lot of uh, good, good, yeah, just, just a lot of goodness and uh, good knowledge from that and uh, good perspective. So thanks so much. And uh, thanks, thanks. Your son was awesome. He did so well. Yeah, I'm surprised. How's he, how's he, was he, so f- he was so fuzzy getting in the car seat, but now he's probably going to get fussy <laughs> leaving. I mean, the car seat, the bike seat. He's having fun. <laughs> We're having fun. Yeah. We can do this again That's now. That's awesome. <laughs> okay. Well, thanks so much, Jonathan. Uh, any last, last words here before we close out? Yeah, same thing I've been saying a bunch of times. But for the viewers there, please... Don't just live how you're supposed to live, just settling for being safe. If you have a dream, follow your dream, follow your heart. Let's find real happiness in life that that we're meant to have, Mm -hmm. and that's what's gonna change the world and allow other people to do the same. Yeah, yeah, totally agree. Thanks, Jonathan. Yeah, my pleasure, have an awesome time. Okay, we're signing off here. You wanna say bye, Valen? Maybe you can get Kisung to say bye? (laughs) Kisung! Well, I can get him try to say go. Let's see here. Keys on. Okay, go. <laughs> Let's Ready. do that. <laughs> Ready, set, go. Okay. Go. <laughs> okay. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, we'll see you next time on the, the Valen Venture Blog. Thanks for joining us. See you. Awesome show. There's so much actionable content and just philosophies and oh man that was really good really loved all of it and i'm seriously thinking to take jonathan up on his offer to join his mastermind group and go through that asm course because yeah i definitely have to take my amazon business to another level i just kind of haphazardly got into it listened to a couple episodes of the amazing seller podcast and that really that's really all i invested into getting started and uh, i feel like i kind of lucked out there but if i want to get serious and start making you know six seven figures i think i really got to you know up my game start investing a little bit more into this business and you know stop doing it so half-heartedly and really really go all in so i'm seriously thinking about taking them up but uh yeah that was that was an awesome episode i hope you guys really enjoyed it and uh yeah thanks for tuning in to the veil and venture vlog hope you got a lot of value out of it hope you enjoyed seeing this cute little guy's face veil you want to say anything <laughs> say bye bye Say like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. <laughs> like and subscribe, guys. It uh, really helps us out. If you uh, subscribe on iTunes or if you're on watching on YouTube, if you subscribe via YouTube. And, uh, yeah, it just really helps us out. And uh, we keep bringing you awesome content. So just uh, keep coming back. Thanks, guys. Say bye, Valen. Bye. No, you have to wave at the camera.
Bye. Okay, guys. See you later. Hey guys, thanks for joining us for this bonus portion of this episode. Um, I just really wanted to record this uh, or add this place because uh, after after we ended the episode, I really got curious myself and I started asking Jonathan all these questions and uh, we were we were recording anyway. Uh, we weren't planning to use it for the show, but I just had a lot of questions for him on about his like Amazon coaching group and mentorship and course that he's offering and facilitating. And it just seemed like there was so much tremendous value there that I really wanted to kind of talk about it more and really promote it. Because, uh, yeah, the question I get asked the most, even though I do a lot of real estate, is like, hey, how'd you get started selling pacifiers on Amazon? And uh, really, it's such an attractive model and such a good model, I feel like. like I used to flip cars and, you know, you always have to be looking for more cars and selling them. There's people like, hey, I want to get flipping cars like you. And I'm like, no, don't do that. Go go invest into an Amazon business. You know, you don't need that much capital, as much capital to buy a car, but it's sustainable. You know, once you make that product line, there's not that much more you have to do with it. It just kind of keeps going on its own. Sure, there's a little bit here and there, but it's pretty passive once you start creating these product lines. And uh, yeah, I think it's such a great model. And um yeah, me and Jonathan, I was just t asking him questions, he was answering them, and uh, so it's kind of uh, broken broken up, but I've kind of compiled them uh, to a question-answer kind of format, uh, so there's like probably eight or nine questions, like uh, 15 minutes long, but I hope you really get a sense of uh, Jonathan's, you know, where his, he's coming from, and he really does want to help people, uh, there's a little monetary incentive for him. Uh, I, I guess it's a decent amount, but I think really uh, his hope is to just help people and help uh, people really grow a business where uh, they can have uh, financial freedom. And uh, that's all what I'm about. I want people, you know, I, I was asking these questions more because I was thinking of friends who I know uh, have good jobs, but they want something else. You know, they just go home and watch TV. They have spare time. But I know I get so much fulfillment from uh, my entrepreneurial endeavors. So this is an easy entry, I feel like, to starting your own business, starting your own uh, entrepreneurship activity so I wanted to promote this to them but I think for all of you watching uh, this is also a great opportunity so I'd really uh, consider taking him up on his offer to join his mentorship group I think it's really powerful when you're part of a collective mastermind all working you know all having invested a certain level all being serious and then kind of going through those steps to creating that business asking each other how you're doing holding each other accountable and truly really really going for something great like this and uh, I'm really excited. I, I'm still contemplating with myself, with my wife, uh, about joining myself. Anyway, I uh, hope you enjoy the next 15 minutes and get something out of it. And feel free to email Jonathan. Um, he's a great guy. So good luck. Godspeed. Thank you. When are you starting that course? It's going to start at the end of October. I'm gonna, I'll put you on my list. I'll, I'll yeah. send you like the, I'm gonna do a webinar next Friday and I'm gonna do, uh, I'll, okay. I'll show like the. Yeah, definitely I'll, put me on. And the, in terms of the value I'm gonna give for the course, that's why I wanted to mention it to the viewers, just in case there's someone. I took a course when I signed up, yeah. I paid 2000 uh, bucks, no, for a coaching group. Yep. And I spend, yep. fi I spent, that's my record, it's $5,000 for one weekend. And I've networked uh -huh. and I've spent a lot of time and I'm going to provide all of this knowledge yeah. to the coaching group. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, did you, do you feel like networking has helped you a lot or do you just like pick up a lot of no. things talking with them? But do you think uh, that's what I was, contacts I, I, I briefly helped? talked about it on the podcast and that's a, that's actually a great mm -hmm. question you can ask in future podcasts because I learned way more from people than I did from any course or an event. And but there's a uh -huh. there's a bigger reason, and that is when yeah. you're by yourself or you're on your own, your own doubts and limitations can get in your way, and your self image. Yeah. When you're around more mm -hmm. people that have done what you want and are more successful than you, mm -hmm. first of all, you're gonna realize it's, they're not that much different than you. They're not even that much smarter than you. Sometimes I'm like, yep. what? He's successful. Yep, yep. And the other thing is when everyone's <laughs> doing certain numbers, it becomes the norm. Yeah. That's why you ask, like, how do people get started if they're not sure? The people that I want to do the course with yeah. are the people that are that want to scale right. a business and aren't afraid to take out a fifty thousand dollar loan to invest into their business. Like those kind mm -hmm. of people. I did not want this because we agreed on this before I decided to do a coaching group. It was just more, if there's people like I've I Facebook messaged some people about the opportunity, and some people said no, nah, not right now, yeah. but other people are like, holy moly, I was just thinking about this, so. 
If the, yeah. if it, How many people – do you have anyone, like, 100% committed yet? I have a few. Oh, just a handful. But that's the only reason I'm how many? Decided. How many are you looking for? I don't know. I can go up to max 30. 30, really? Okay. I'm most likely um, going to have a group of, like, honestly, 10. I'm but I can just say I can do 30. Yeah. The course is for newbies. Okay. But – it's going to be, it's kind okay. of fun because I've, for instance, a good friend of mine, Tomio Wise, he really wants to do the business and I really want to help him. Yeah. I really want to see him succeed in it too. And I know yeah. that I can help people. And even just from simple yeah. values, like helping people with the shipping and logistics and hooking them up with people in China and all that type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. So wait, what what was the date again that this course starts and that you're doing this thing? End of October. I haven't finalized the date. I have two options. The course is four grand. It's what I really recommend. But people that mm -hmm. don't want to do it, they can just do the coaching group for two grand. Because some people already have a course and they're not successful with it and yeah. they might join. And other people yeah. may – because I'll cover yeah. all the basics in my coaching group. But the course – is a professional yeah. course. They invest a lot of money and time in making yeah. it. So it, they're going to do a much better job yeah. at explaining the basics. Yeah. No, I think the course would be valuable for me because, honestly, I started from, like, two podcast episodes on the Am Amazing Seller podcast. And that's pretty much all I've invested in education for Amazon. It's, like, very, very basic, very minor. I don't know any of, like, the actual, like, tactical steps to how you're supposed to do it. So Yeah, so. I think I need, like, from a ground level. Yeah, and you can skip a lot of steps. Yeah. But also, if you put the money down, it's not the money. It's the fact that you're mm -hmm. betting on yourself that I would say, okay, I think you're going to do well. It's just subconsciously. Think yeah. about a book you buy compared to a, a book someone hands you on the street or a flyer someone hands you on the street. Yeah, like, that's the most popular question I receive. Like, people just ask me, how do I get... Even on Bigger Pockets forums, like, people will message me and be like, hey, I saw you did Amazon. How did you get started? And this and that. And it, seems like, it seems like a lot of people are, like, really inspired by Amazon and want to get started. Yeah, it's a good... I mean, because you, 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 you don't have to buy a warehouse. You don't have to buy a logistics team. You don't have to buy yeah. all kinds of things. You, you're using the power of the Internet. You don't have to go to China, theoretically. You can just run everything. Mm -hmm. It's so cheap. To st it's yeah. Have you been to China? Yeah, I go twice a like year. Seen your manufacturers? Yeah, I go twice oh, a really? year now. Okay. I work. I work full time. I'm, does your friend work full time? Do you think that's an issue at all? No. That if was a question I want that. No. Ma many m many people start this business. They don't quit their full time jobs until uh, until mm -hmm. they their Amazon business can replace it. Yeah. It's just I'm different that I don't want a full time job. So that's why I'm like just going from th I'm a yep. but if most people that do this business they do their full time job and they work it at night but this is big uh -huh. their mindset is really focused on the Amazon business so even though they only yeah. work on it at night yeah. their f their mindset is really committed to building it so if you're thinking about real estate and yep. you're thinking about Amazon I don't think it's gonna work you'd have yeah. to say okay for the next six yeah. months. I'm just going to focus on Amazon and get this going. I just don't think many people realize like lucra how lucrative it is uh, starting products mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. so many people are building seven and eight figure businesses. Yeah, honestly, like when you were talking about how like you continually you have to like reinvest into uh, Amazon business and things like that, it's like, nope, I'm a cheapskate, and that's what I've been doing, and that's probably why I haven't really gone anywhere with it. Hundred percent. That's uh, that's a hundred percent you know, why. Done. I I didn't go to events. I decided yeah. to go to an event for a thousand dollars, and I tripled my business two yeah. months later. Yeah. So I'm not. Yeah, that's it. why for this coaching group, um, I just want to make it clear for people. I'm not looking for the people. I'm not saying you are. I'm just saying in general. I'm not. I'm looking for people that just yeah, want to yeah. nickel and no. dime it because it doesn't work. I'm looking for people that are ready to, yeah. that are excited and like they're like I'm building this thing. Because it's it's different than like multi-level yeah. marketing. Multi-level marketing, you can get started with just nothing and build your sales funnel. But this is a business. You are like you're gonna you can compete mm -hmm. with like big brand. I compete with Munchkin and Nook. Like you're competing with big brands. Yeah. This is a, this is a real business. So it's not you're not starting yeah. just some like side sales thing. You're developing a business. It can be a side thing. I just don't. The people that come to the events, they're all serious. So I only know people are serious. Mm -hmm. So for me, my mindset is only serious people succeed in it. <laughs> I'm just trying this yeah. out 
because people have asked me and it's I don't mm-hmm. have time to like individually help people and and if people yeah. sign up and I get a little commission from the course or something there's a there's also a fair like mm-hmm. exchange for the time and information I'm sharing so I yeah. decided I'll give it a try yeah I'll give it a try if I like yeah. it I might do it on a much bigger scale because ultimately my life yeah. dream is like is helping people to accomplish their dreams 